Good morning, y'all. Dr. Ben here. It is the start of another vlog. It is Tuesday morning and at 9.40, 9.40 a.m. I'm about to go to Costco. If you're wondering why, Ben, like, how are you not at work? It's because this new rotation that I'm on is second shift. So it's 1 p.m. to 11 p.m., which is perfect for me. I think it's the ideal, like, work, work hours. If I could choose one set of work hours for the rest of my life, it would be the 1 p.m. to 11 p.m. shift because... It allows me to have energy in the morning to get everything that I need to done. I just took a shower, so I uh, got all cute and stuff so I can go to Costco and get some groceries for the week. So I got a bunch of groceries from Costco, but one thing I want to test out with you all that I haven't tried yet is these glass tiramisu bowls. I had their Belgian chocolate, but it looks like they're not selling that one anymore. That's the one thing about Costco. Sometimes they'll have some things that are super bomb, but then they don't sell it anymore. It's like limited edition or whatever. But these tiramisu bowls were only $3. They were on sale. So I think the regular price was like $8 and then they got like $5 or off or something. So it was such a steal. Um, and I'm feeling a little, uh, a little snacky. So um, let's try this one out. I really liked the uh, Belgian Belgian mousse. Um, but yeah, this is the first legit tiramisu tiramisu that I'm gonna have because I usually have the Costco, not Costco, but Kroger cake version of it. Alrighty, let's open this up. It's like wrapped in plastic. Oh god. Okay. Okay. Looks like there's a little bit of cocoa powder on top of it. Yeah, baby. It's not for you. We can't have it. It's chocolate. You always want whatever it is that I'm eating. All right. Let's uh, give it a taste. Ooh, it's very fluffy. Mmm. It's like kind of airy. Sweet, but not too sweet. I like I like it when things are not artificially sweet, but it tastes like just the right amount of sweetness, creaminess, and cocoa powderiness. <coughs> Definitely choked on the cocoa powder. Mmm. And it's like really eggy too. In a good way. Kind of like a pudding, like a pudding custard consistency. I'm getting a little bit of the alcohol, but not too much. It's almost like a vanilla liqueur. I'm acting like I know what I'm talking about, but I clearly don't. Mmm. Now that is tasty. John, look, you can't have any of this, baby. Mmm. So, so good. Yeah, this was this was a winner. And only three bucks for like six servings. And it comes in like this cute little glass cup. Can't really complain. Good morning, y'all. It is Thursday. Oh my God. It's been so hard to adjust to back to a day schedule i felt like i was a zombie the first three days in this new rotation i do freaking love the uh 1 to 11 shift it's been making my life so much easier as far as you know getting things done in the day but whoo today i think it's the first time i got like a full eight seven to eight hours of sleep because in previous days i was still so used to the night schedule i was waking up at like 6 7 a.m and not getting the full amount of sleep that i needed so i was groggy all day but uh today is very exciting because i got something in the mail that i want to show y'all and kind of use uh because i feel like it's a cheap way to get clothes embroidered without embroidery prices okay so here it is it's a package 
with a bunch of heat press on uh, name tags. I'm gonna open it up for the first time. Hopefully it turned out okay. And, but we'll see. Ah. Ugh. I hope they're not too big. Okay. Oh my God. They are freaking huge. I don't think I can use these guys. <laughs> so bad but the thing is i they said this would be name tag size i mean look at this y'all this is like absolute trash it's way too big and like the demo the demo shot that they had on the on their uh page on their shop page was literally like you can put it on this side of your like chest and it'll be like the exact name tag size so um luckily i didn't spend embroidery prices embroidered clothing with your name on it can cost up 20 dollars per embroidery i bought a pack of five for like 20 bucks so uh <laughs> i'm glad i tested it out because i was gonna buy a shiz ton uh, to embroider all my like professional work clothing but I was like okay let me just buy like the base pack of five and see how it is and I'm glad I did because um wow okay but besides that dud I did get something else in the mail that I can share with y'all because that segment is uh, a doozy is I got some restocking of the things that I usually use uh, for my morning routine and my daily uh, shower so let's open this up oh the glass cutter just failed on me. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. First one is my leave-in shampoo, Pure Door, Pure Door MD. Um, this is specifically formulated to include ingredients that are natural DHT blockers, along with um baby move along with baby <laughs> along with ketoconazole which is an antifungal which has shown some clinical some not good but um hair loss research is not that advanced yet um but ketoconazole has some clinical evidence that it can block thc at the sites dht not thc that's cannabis uh, <laughs> marijuana but it can block dht which is the active hormone that causes alopecia hair loss in uh, those who are more testosterone dominated as they get older so it has that it has natural ingredients like saw palmetto which are natural dht blockers they're not super super potent nor is it very well evidence-based but it is something and it's not too expensive a 30 dollar bottle will last me about three to four-ish months, so that's like $10 a month. I can I can deal with that. It's a bit more expensive than traditional shampoo, but I just leave this in and then I use a cheaper shampoo uh, when I actually take my shower. And I'll only use this like maybe three to four times a week. So not a big issue there. And the next thing I got in the mail is the ferret gel. Adapalene gel. I think I talked about it in a previous video that I started using this again uh, when I started residency because my face was getting super super greasy and oily at work because I was doing these long shifts. I was super stressed out so my face was secreting so much oil and I was getting more and more acne. I originally used this for about a year when I started taking testosterone and I got the original year of really bad <laughs> second puberty acne while I was transitioning. Uh, but since I've been back on this, my face has been a lot less oily and I'm doing a lot better again. So I think I'm gonna be on this indefinitely. Deferent gel is also pretty good for wrinkles and um, you know, long-term aging. You do have to use sunscreen during the day because of that. And you all heard about my sunscreen woes in that other vlog that I did. But, uh, it's not as potent as a true retinoid, like uh, triretinoin. It's something that you can get prescribed by your doctor, but I just don't like dealing with doctors right now because I'm just so busy. So deferrin gel is the best over-the-counter 
anti-wrinkle, anti-acne medication out there. Hey y'all, so I'm actually about to go to work right now, but I wanted to show y'all the new pair of shoes that I've gotten, which are absolutely ridiculous, but I think they're super fashionable and super, super comfortable and super, super intuitive for someone who works like 12 to 16 hour shifts and this feet start getting a little stinky. So I want to preface this by saying that I've always been a Crocs hater. Like I hate Crocs. I hate the way they look. I think they're tacky. But I do know the trend in the medical industry that they are super popular among nurses, especially nurses who work in the hospital, uh, long drawn out shifts. So you know what? After like being in uh, my month long inpatient rotation and every day I felt like my feet were stinking real bad and like it got so bad to the point where like near the end of the shift I started I, I could notice the odor coming from my shoes so I decided to bite the bullet and buy myself a pair of Crocs but these are a little bit different uh, they're kind of a new design and I think they're super super rad they're called the Crocs Hiker Escape not the hiker but the hiker escape this is the dusty olive Let's see if y'all can see this but this is the dusty olive colorway and look how chunky they are i love the fact that it has like a little back strap at the end just to extra secure um the shoes and they're super super chunky they give me a little bit of height because i'm a short guy um but these i've been wearing them for at least three weeks now and they are absolutely phenomenal i love the fact that not only are they stylish they're not as ugly as regular crocs but they're also like i love like the square look um they're also super lightweight they're super intuitive the the holes the holes are actually really really great for aeration it keeps your socks dry all day i can be on my feet all day they are non-slip and yeah like and 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 if you get blood or any vomit any type of human body fluids on it you can easily clean it off so all in all these shoes have been fantastic and with the extra benefit of looking like a kingdom hearts character i mean this is giving me sora shoes vibes and y'all know if y'all know me from childhood i was always a big big kingdom hearts fan i still want to get a kingdom hearts tattoo one day but these shoes have been great. I highly recommend. I know I was a Crocs hater, but um, I can't, I can't, I can't find anything wrong with these mo this model, and it's so cute. Like, <laughs> good morning, y'all. Happy Saturday. It's already Saturday. I can't believe it. A week has gone by already in this rotation. I freaking love the one to eleven p.m. shift. I'm really sad that it's not going to be like a thing for the rest of the year. I wish. I wish. Ideally, I could stick to the schedule forever. But alas, I only have one week left in this rotation. But we're making it do. I'm really enjoying it. It's psych emergency again. I, w I never thought I would be the kind of person to say that I like psych emergency, but it's really, really rewarding to be able to be there for people who are going through crisis. Like, I can't emphasize this enough. Like, it is the most rewarding and humbling job in the world to be able to be there for patients and make them feel better when it feels like their entire world is falling apart. Like, it, it gets me a little teary-eyed every time I think about it. And speaking of, you know, like, making patients feel better, uh, Fridays, I do this tradition where I wear a specific fit uh, when it comes to going to work, a specific set of scrubs. And um, la uh, last Friday, actually, someone someone at the hospital uh, noticed me wearing it and was like, you are best dressed at the hospital. So I was wearing those chunky Crocs, but I want to show y'all what the tradition is for me on Fridays and it was inspired by one of my co-residents who wants to be matchy matchy with me on Fridays and a little bit of Nicki Minaj. So this right here is my Friday fit. It's all pink and all cute. It's uh has a little bit of embroidery. It says Dr. Ben has seen here. I got this from Figs. It was like my first little special scrub purchase after after getting my first paycheck 
and I freaking love it. I love the shade of pink. It's not overtly hot pink, which makes me feel a little self-conscious, but it's like this masculine pastel, not even masculine, I would say it's more so like gender neutral shade of pink. And it's just so cute. I love it. Uh, uh, patients have said they love it. And even like um, nursing staff, other staff in the hospital has said, oh my God, this is just so adorable. Um, and it's, even if they say it's adorable, I don't like, it's like very gender affirming for me. And these are the pants with the Crocs. I mean, like you can't really, you can't really, uh, scrub this fit at all like at all and lastly i guess i want to uh not end this vlog without actually talking about with, with what's been going on in the world right now uh especially uh in the in the middle east region because it's terrible the news that's coming from from that part of the world it's just absolutely shocking unfortunately i haven't been able to keep up with all the details because i'm at work so much but I don't think it would be right of me to like completely stay silent about it. I know I I haven't really addressed it in my Instagram and Twitter or anything like that. I, I have reshared things from like UNICEF and humanitarian causes. I am very disheartened by what's been going on in the Middle East. Um, I feel like human lives are being put under put under this guise to emphasize and prioritize ideologies. So instead of prioritizing children, instead of prioritizing humanitarian causes, instead of protecting hospitals, uh, people are, like my, my, I'm getting goosebumps talking about this, but like there is no respect for human dignity right now. And, it's really sad. It's honestly quite terrifying that even in the world of the digital age where video evidence is out there for everyone to see, that institutions will do anything to wipe out human life to fulfill their cause. And that, that makes me so sad because I don't know about you all, if you live in the United States, in the elementary school, public school system, you are constantly told about the evils that humanity has caused against po different populations, populations that are considered minorities. And every time that I go through these classes growing up, they always emphasize, even overemphasize that history should not repeat the evils that it has conducted. But unfortunately, time and time again, I see this continuation of evil cyclically coming back and hurting so many people. And I, I, I really don't know what to say to that. It's, it's incredibly disheartening and at the same time, I also wonder like all of these, like a lot of people are doing great work here in the US uh, and in the Western world to advocate for the people that are suffering over there. But a lot of the time, I also feel like is a lot is a lot of this performative because so many people who are making all of these like Instagram reels, TikToks, what are they doing beyond making an audience for yourselves? Like, are you actually providing aid? Are you actually asking for aid? Are you actually linking people to places where they can give aid to those who are suffering? Or are you just, are you just trying to get attention from a very unfortunate situation? So I've been, I've been thinking a lot about these things and that's why I've actually kind of taken a back seat about talking about it. Because at the same time, if I were to talk about it, one, I live in the freaking United States where we're not even impacted by any of this. Uh, I'm incredibly privileged to not be impacted by any of this. So I would much rather have the voices of the people who are actually there, who are suffering, be the voices for us. Anyways, I know that was a big, 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 big rant, but uh, 
it's been a it's been a hard couple of weeks and i'm sure it has been hard for a lot of you anyways that's the end of this vlog uh, i'll catch y'all in the next one i'm gonna go wash my car wax it it's been dirty for a little bit and then start this weekend i'm going to the north carolina state fair with two of my buddies and hopefully have a good time i love y'all this is dr Boo.